Do you remember the last time you were able to enjoy sitting in stillness? When did you last pause and take a step back to reflect? Do you feel at peace and connected to your center? And do you feel like there's enough time to do the things you want to do in your life? In the past, I have often found myself wishing there were more hours in the day. I felt like I always had to race against the clock. And even now, I still feel that way sometimes. We try to fit more and more in less and less time. So much so that taking it easy and doing things slowly feels like a waste of time, like we're not doing enough. If you can relate, today's video is for you. I share 10 practical slow living tips that anyone can do because slow living is not just for people who don't lead busy lives. It is not about doing everything very, very slowly, but rather doing them without feeling rushed and without thinking about the next thing. And we can implement the tools of slow living in small ways that together make a huge difference in how we feel on a day-to-day -day basis. Hey my friends, welcome back to the channel. And if you're new here, this is a place where you can get weekly tips and inspiration for living a simpler, happier, and calmer life. So feel free to subscribe if you wanna follow along. Today's video is sponsored by AQT, and I am so excited that they agreed to sponsor today's video because if you've been around for a while, you know how much I love tea. <laughs> and so we will chat more about them later. I personally believe that it doesn't really matter whether you are a natural morning person or an evening person, what matters way more is knowing when your energy is lower and when it is naturally higher, and then trying to honor this rhythm as best you can. So if you're a morning person like me, the tip is to enjoy your mornings more slowly. So wake up just a little bit earlier if you need to, so you have enough time to enjoy your breakfast or your coffee or both. <laughs> and try not to look at your screen for the first 30 minutes of the day. And if you're an evening person, same thing, try to end your days more slowly. So maybe do some breathing, read a book, try not to look at your screens for the last 30 minutes of the day. And if you wanna do both, that is fine too, of course. So you can start your day slowly and end them by slowing down as well. For most people, it works best to take a short mini break every 60 to 90 minutes in order to keep our energy levels from depleting as well as to stay productive and energized during the day and focused. But if you are like me, you might probably forget to take these mini breaks most of the time. So schedule these breaks and actually take them and set an alarm for every 60 to 90 minutes. Just take five minutes to walk around your space, maybe drink a few sips of water, take some deep breaths, uh, maybe check in with how you're feeling, anything like that. And try not to look at any screens during these five minutes because that kind of defeats the whole purpose. If this is not possible at your current job or your personal situation, Situation, then try to see what is possible for you and try to get just a few of these micro breaks into your day. Even just one or two minutes works really well. An unexpected thing that I learned from slowing down and simplifying my life is just how draining pointless discussions can be. The type of conversation where you can already see no good is gonna come from it. And sometimes it's just better to bow out of these conversations that you know are not gonna help anyone. Some discussions are worth having because they'll help you to understand someone better, or maybe to come up with a solution to a problem, or maybe you just have something on your heart that you wanna voice. But when it comes to these pointless discussions, you can just save your energy and walk away. When it comes to slow living, it really helps if we can spot those activities that we do that take up more time than they realistically need to. Because that time that we can save, we can then spend on other things like single tasking or doing things more slowly and mindfully. And this is where good is good enough comes into play. So if you can be a perfectionist from time to time, 
like moi, <laughs> then the Pareto principle can be your best friend. This says that we can get 80% of our output from 20% of our input, which is time and energy. So if we can get something up to 80%, which is good enough, instead of always needing it to be as perfect as we can get it, we can save ourselves a lot of time and energy. This is my all-time favorite way of slowing down, making yourself a nice beverage and enjoying it without distractions. I do this almost every day. It's easy, it's comforting, and it's just a great way of practicing self-care. And this is the perfect time to thank our sponsor for today, EQT. I am beyond excited that they agreed to partner up with me for today's video because I am just so passionate about tea, as most of you probably know, and Japanese green tea is my all-time favorite. EQ offers a wide variety of Japanese green tea and they sent me five different ones. And I have just been over the moon these last couple of weeks getting to know these different teas. I have tried many, many green teas by now, but I can honestly say that these are among the best I have ever tasted. The teas from IQ come from dedicated tea farmers from different places in Kyushu, which is in southern Japan, and they put so much love and care into these teas, and you can really taste that. There's a lot of diversity in the different tastes and brewing practices, and it is just so much fun trying all these different flavors. The name IQ means one break, and so it is all about bringing a moment of peace and joy to your day by mindfully brewing your cup of tea and then enjoying it as part of slowing down, and I am just here for all of it. They sent me two different kinds of sencha, a matcha, a gyokuro, which is kind of like the king of green teas, and a shiraore, which is great for cold brew. And they come in the prettiest wrapping of Japanese washi paper that I am definitely saving for my art journal. I love that the teas come with very detailed information about the production area, the tea itself, as well as the directions for preparing the drink. So even if you are new to green tea, you can still enjoy it as it is meant to be brewed. And if you want some help with picking out a tea that you would like, you can always contact them because they offer personal advice to help you navigate the beautiful world of green tea. If you want your own green tea, you can click the link in the description box and use my code HAPPYZEN to get 10% off. If you often find yourself pressed for time, then take a moment to think, how well are you planning? Are you managing your time? And are you good at estimating how long a task or an activity will take? For me, I found that I am not the best always at planning these things. And because of that, I often overscheduled myself. So what I started doing to counteract that is scheduling one and a half times the amount of time that I think something is gonna take. And that usually works out really well. I found that this is often much more realistic and it allows me to do my work without feeling like I am racing against the clock. So if you recognize this, definitely try it out sometime. A couple times a day, and if you're new to this, maybe get in the habit of doing this once a day, take one minute of caring for yourself. So if you've been sitting down, maybe stand up, walk around your space a bit, take a big stretch, take a big yawn, uh, give yourself a quick foot massage or a neck massage. Another great thing to do to slow down that is really quick is taking one minute to slow down your breath. So take a deep breath in and a big sigh out and do that three times. This is just so easy. I feel like it almost shouldn't be this effective but it really is, so try that sometime. I recently learned an interesting thing about vagus nerve massage to reduce stress and calm down. Now, I am no doctor, of course, but I learned that the vagus nerve is a critical part of our parasympathetic nervous system, which is also known for being our rest and digestive system. And by massaging it, we can actually find some relaxation. So what you do is you find that back of your neck and the back of your ears, the skin on the back of your ears, and you can just quickly and gently massage it a little bit. And yeah, it's really nice. Number eight is to get yourself a hobby and to do that for 15 to 30 minutes instead of watching TV or being on your phone. And this way it won't take up more time, but it'll probably be more effective in relaxing and slowing down and finding some joy than staring at a screen wheel. I love to spend some time reading or maybe art journaling. Recently, I have been making these little origami animals, which this is a dinosaur. <laughs> 
It's just so much more fun than I expected it to be. So just do something for fun. There doesn't have to be a goal. It doesn't have to lead towards something, just something that you enjoy doing. Sometimes it can be really difficult to slow down in our actions and our daily life if we feel like our mind is going 100 miles an hour. So if you are experiencing racing thoughts, try slowing them down by getting them on paper. By writing it down, your thoughts have to slow down because otherwise you won't be able to write them down quickly enough. And also by getting them on paper, your mind can more easily let them go because it doesn't feel like it needs to be repeating them over and over again. Start getting in the habit of protecting your time as if it is something that is crazy precious because it is, and you are allowed to prioritize your time and guard your calendar. It's just like with decluttering our home. If we have a lot of stuff, the answer is not always to get more storage space. Sometimes it is to have less stuff. And it is the same with what we fill our days with. If we have a lot going on, the answer is not always being more efficient or more productive. The answer can just be doing less, and you are allowed to keep a part of your calendar free. If you want some help in slowing down your life, you can always join my 30-day slow living program, which is called Unhurried. You'll get an email from me every day with a new lesson and an inspiring challenge. And the program is designed to help you experience slowing down in your everyday life. And the challenges are always short and sweet, so easy to fit into a busy lifestyle. I will leave a link for you where you can join in the description box if you want to get more information. Thank you to AQ for sponsoring today's video. Feel free to check them out. And right here, I have a video with self-care ideas for stress. Right there, I have 10 daily habits to simplify your life. As always, questions, comments, conversations down below. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you next week. Bye bye.